everyone. Next, we have American Lithium Corp. It trades on the NASDAQ under the symbol AMLI and is actively engaged in the development of large-scale lithium projects within mining-friendly jurisdictions throughout the Americas. Joining us today is Andy Bowering, co-founder and chairman of the board of American Lithium Corp. Andy has been a venture capitalist for over 30 years as owner-operator of drilling companies and leadership in worldwide mineral exploration and development. He founded and funded Millennial Lithium Corp and built teams to pursue precious base and industrial metals from exploration to production. He's the founder and operator of Caldera Environmental, Pinnacle Mines, ATW Gold, CapEx Iron Ore, Prime Mining, Millennial Lithium, and American Lithium. Great to meet you, Andy. Welcome to the Emerging Growth Conference today. Well, thank you so much for having me, Anna. It's a pleasure. All right. The floor is yours. Call me back when you're ready for questions. Well, thank you very much. And uh, hello to everyone that's listening in. And thank you for taking the time today to uh, hear a little bit about American Lithium. I'll, I'll try and keep this at a um, quick pace and, and, and a high level. But as mentioned, we are a large developer of, of lithium resources in the Americas. And, and we have a couple other little surprises that I'll talk about uh, that are also in the company. I caution all the readers to look at this disclaimer at their leisure. Uh, I will make some forward-looking statements um, in my presentation. And um, with that, we'll get started. American Lithium was founded in 2016. We started in Nevada, but we, uh, within three years, had acquired another asset in Peru. So we have two of the largest lithium deposits in the Americas. We are second to... Uh, Thacker Pass in Nevada with our TLC project just outside of Tonopah. And then we also have another uh, close to uh, similar size lithium asset in South Peru. We also have one of the largest, and I don't know if it's fifth or sixth largest undeveloped uranium deposits in the world, but it's certainly one of the largest, and it's got the attention of a lot of interested parties in, in the uranium space. And we'll talk about that a little bit. All three of these projects have been through PEA and uh, are now at PFS level. We have a uh, accomplished management team. As I mentioned, uh, my CEO and I have founded another lithium company that was taken out uh, in 2022 by Lithium Americas for close to 500 million. We also founded a cobalt company that was taken out by Gervois. And, uh, and then we've got several um, uh, sophisticated operators from the uranium space as well. We've got strong community support in all of our regions. We, we uh, I think that's an important piece of, of, of developing any project. And then while our cash is uh, probably at the low point over the last year or two, we're still well capitalized. We've got over 15 million in cash, 10 million in an equity investment uh, in another, um, what I would say is up and coming lithium project in Nevada called Surge. And uh, no debt and no royalties on any of these products and, or any of these projects. And then last but not least, I would suggest that given the current discounting of all of the uh, battery metals and, and lithium companies, that it's probably a pretty good entry point. Next slide. So a little bit about TLC in Nevada. 100% uh, owned, near surface, about six miles north of Tonopah. It's in a great jurisdiction. Uh, we've got highway, uh, hydropower, uh, rail, and gas nearby. The project sits above the water table. And I'll just go back to that last slide to show you the size of it. 8.8 .8 million tons uh, measured and indicated of lithium carbonate equivalent, and then another couple million tons inferred. Uh, potential to be a long-life, low-cost producer, We've already done the plan of operation. There is no endangered plants or animals on our, it's the high desert, there's nothing there. You can see in the background behind the 
highway there and around the drill rig. There's just nothing there. And we can produce either a lithium carbonate or a lithium hydroxide there. Mineralization starts right at surface and goes down to about 350 feet, ideal for an open pit um, quarrying operation. And it's low in deleterious elements, uh, make, making the, um, the processing quite simple on it. And we'll get into that a little bit. But suffice to say that what TLC um, doesn't have in grade compared to Thacker Pass, it makes up in a lot of other um, benefits. So this slide tells you a little bit about the, um, the numbers behind the PEA. And so an NPV 8% of 3.26 billion US after tax IRR of 27.5. Uh, um, average life of mine production based on this PA would have been 38,000 tons of LC, um, LC over 40 years, uh, big cash flows, and a reasonably low capex at, at 820 million to get started. And of course, it is scalable. I mentioned before what's significant about this resource. It was a, uh, laid down in a cold water, freshwater environment and as a consequence of that, the lithium is very weakly bound to the clays. In fact, we leach out 90% of the lithium within 10 minutes of an acid leach. And uh, we get over 97% extraction of the lithium. Uh, the end result is that we can produce over a 99% um, pure lithium carbonate on the first precipitation. And then of course it can economically be upgraded to battery grade uh, and, and uh, produce a carbonate or a hydroxide. There is also a potential for a magnesium sulfate uh, byproduct. That There's a section of our PEA that's based on that, but that's obviously not the first priority. Um, as we speak, we are doing more advanced metallurgy uh, and some geotechnical test work to, um, to back up the PFS that's currently underway. Uh, we also... Um, uh, have started a pilot plant so that we can, uh, that's being done in Australia by DRA Global and Stantec. And uh, we hope to have results of that in 2024 with a uh, plan of operation being filed this year and then ultimately permitting with the BLM and NDEP 2024 to 2025. Um, that's TLC. It's uh, uh, um, lost my train of thought. But I'll just move on to the flow sheet. You can look through this at your convenience. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to go into it, but it's step by step, the same flow sheet that Thacker Pass uh, envisions using and is currently on um, track to start producing in three years. Uh, have a look at that at your leisure. I'll talk a little bit about Falchani. Falchani is different than TLC, TLC being a, a clay stone. Falchani is a volcanic tooth. It is a hard rock. It is not a pegmatite. It does not have spodumene in it. It's a volcanic tooth that contains lithium and cesium. And as a consequence, it's amenable to acid leaching. You don't have to calcinate or roast the rock like you would have to do with a pegmatite to, uh, to um, uh, extract lithium. It's simply a sulfuric acid leach. Uh, it's in south of Peru. It was discovered in 2018, and it's been drilled off uh, over the last four years. It's one of the largest hard rock lithium deposits globally. Again, sits at surface. Uh, low capital requirements, simple grind and leach. And we have produced battery grade uh, lithium carbonate uh, using our flow sheet uh, already. Uh, there's no need to upgrade or refine. It produces an end product. The other advantage to Falchani is that you can produce a uh, sulfate of potash byproduct. Uh, Peru imports all of its fertilizers, and consequently, it has a value in Peru, unlike, say, a potash product would from TLC in Nevada. Uh, it's near to highway, power, water, and labor, and it's currently under PFS. 
We have some incredible support from the local communities there, and you'll see that in a couple of slides later when we talk a little bit about ESG. Again, the resource sits above the water table, making it very simple to, uh, to develop and, and low and deleterious materials. The results of the PEA from uh, Falchani are, uh, were published this morning, in fact. Uh, NPV at 8, 8%, over $5 billion. After-tax IRR, 32%, payback in three years. And, uh, and this is one of the lowest operating cost projects globally uh, and along mine life. The deposit there can be drilled off much bigger. We're still waiting for some drill permits to expand that. But... Uh, but, but this is a world-class deposit. This is a, uh, I would suggest a world-class opportunity in the lithium space, and there's a lot of interested parties. It's currently in piloting, and, uh, and EIA has been filed, and we're expecting that to be um, approved by the government in the near term. You can go look through the PEA at your leisure, and you'll see the alternative cases where we produce cesium, which is used in night vision goggles and things like that, and I don't know, sells for fifty or sixty thousand dollars a ton. So, a val valuable commodity. Um, and uh, uh, that's Falchani. Again, simple flow sheet, grinding, and then sulfuric acid leach. And then some uh, impurity removal, and and uh, and the end result is a lithium product, whether you choose a carbonate or a hydroxide. Falchani is at the lower end of the of the um, cost of um, total cost for production amongst our peer group. You can see it there. TLC somewhat higher. It's a little bit difficult to read, or all the I see the companies have all been taken off this slide, but. Uh, but, but if you go look at the benchmark slides, you'll see them there. The surprise in this company is Makusani. Makusani is one of the largest undeveloped uranium deposits in the world. Uh, the NPV8 here is 600 and um, just over $600 million, an IRR of 40%, and 1.8 year payback. That's a $50 uranium. The PEA is six years old. We're in the process of doing a new PEA. It hasn't come out yet. But in this PEA, the costs were around $18, all in sustaining costs around $18 a pound. And so, uh, and a low capex of $300 million. This is a, um, a uranium deposit that's in high demand. We've had several of the successful uranium explorer developers approach us to try and get a hold of this project. We are in the process of planning to spin it out to the benefit of shareholders, and that will come in the uh, uh, in 2024. Uh, Makusani is made up of five near surface deposits. You can see them in the slide up above. There is a lot of opportunity to expand this resource. It's currently an indicated resource of 95 95 million tons at 248 ppm. Uh, resulting in 52 million pounds of, of uh, U308 equivalent uh, and, uh, and the inferred 130 million pounds or tons for 72 million pounds. One of the features of Makusani is that you can mechanically upgrade the um, rock so that you end up with a head grade of around 600 ppm, making it uh, very attractive for process. I didn't mention that earlier, but both of uh, TLC and uh, and uh, Falchani are also um, advanced by beneficiating the ore. In fact, we take, uh, I shouldn't use the word ore, I guess. Uh, we take TLC rock and, and uh, um, averaging about 1,000 to 1,100 ppm lithium and, uh, and upgrade it to about 2,100 ppm just through mechanical beneficiation and uh, dense media separation. So just to give you a quick summary of the development plan going forward, TLC has been going through infill and expansion drilling 
Uh, we have water rights. I think we have about 2,500 acre feet of water currently under ownership. We own three ranches in the community and we've been in negotiations on one more. We don't own a, there is no royalty on it anymore. We've bought that back. And there's ongoing metallurgical work being done and the flow sheet was finalized. So now we are heading to a, um, uh, a, um, a bulk sample, a metallurgical bulk sample and pilot, uh, um, a pilot plant for the uh, um, filing of our plan of operations with the BLM and our mine plan. Uh, and then uh, we are currently in PFS on it. So uh, you can see the plan forward there. Uh, Falchani, or Falchani, very similar, also in PFS. We were issued an exploration permit for one of the regions beside Falchani, and we're uh, drilling that as we speak. There are several other areas we'd like to get to. It's not a priority, but Falchani can be a lot larger. Uh, we've had an EIA filed with the government, and we're waiting for the, uh, for the approval of that. Uh, we are currently in a, and I didn't discuss this, but we've been challenged on a couple of our claims there, and we've gone through, uh, it's beyond the scope of this discussion, but the last Superior Court of Peru upheld our uh, right to the, to the claims again. There's 32 of 155 that are, are being challenged. Um, uh, and we're currently building a demonstration plant and then feasibility will follow in 2024 and 25 for Falchani. Just a little bit about the leadership of the company. Uh, I've been in the business for 30 years. I founded Prime Mining, um, largest shareholder, Pierre Lassonde and Trinity um, Capital, uh, exploring in Western Mexico. I was a founder, a director and officer of Millennial Lithium, which got bought by Lithium Americas. Simon Clark, our CEO, and I have been together for 25 years now. Uh, our last company, M2 Cobalt, was sold to Gervois. Uh, Simon's been with us for three or four years now. Lawrence Steffen, our COO, president, and a director, founded Plateau Energy, which we bought in 2021. Uh, he's been with Goldfields, uh, JCI, and has built projects all over the globe. And then you can see the rest of the board there. Claudia Tornquist, our uh, president and CEO of Kodiak Copper, is also our chair of the audit committee. Alex Sakumas uh, and uh, Ben Benninger and Karsten Korch. And then I wouldn't, I'd wouldn't—I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about some of the people we have. Uh, Ted O'Connor has been in the uranium space for over 25 years. He came from Cameco and was a director at Cameco. Uh, uh, also a lithium geologist, but, uh, but his specialty is uranium. Philip Gibbs, our CFO, and, and uh, Ulysses Raul Solis, our, our GM in Peru, uh, holds us all together. Environment's important. I, I said at the beginning of this presentation that, that the local communities support us. You know, we, we support potato farming for them down there. We support uh, students going off to university and we fund some scholarships for that. Uh, we take the community as our partners. Uh, this community has gone to Peru a couple times to, to provoke the federal government to move quicker on some of our permitting and uh, and, and we employ a lot of local people. We're conscious of social well-being. We're conscious of the environment and, and of our health and safety. Quickly on the capital structure, uh, 215 million shares issued and outstanding. That gives us, I don't know, a 350 million market cap. Any one of these projects could could support that market cap, and given the current uranium price, I'd suggest that maybe Makusani might all on its own if we were to actively go to work on on Makusani. There's 20 million warrants outstanding, are exercisable at three dollars primarily, and they bring another 60 million in the treasury when we trend that direction. Fully diluted, 253 million shares out. Uh, we have an investment in Surge. We own. 14% of them partially diluted. We like what they're doing. And uh, um, you can see the list of our major shareholders. I'm the largest independent shareholder. Uh, there's at least 100,000 shareholders across the globe on this company. 
And there's the um, current analyst coverage. There's the stock performance over the last several years, to say the least, the lithium trade has been elastic. Uh, each one of those spikes is some developments in the company. The last year has been a horrendous time in the lithium exploration development business as we watched the commodity hockey stick up to about $80,000 a ton for, for carbonates or hydroxides and then all the way back down to 13 or 14,000. I've been exploring for lithium since 2015. I've been through two bottoms uh, and I would suggest, and two peaks, and I would suggest that we're at a bottom again. And I think that uh, that that uh, that we head up from here. And I don't know if we bounce lot in the bottom for a while, but but I think right now is a really good entry point. Uh, I, I don't need to take you all through this lithium forecast. I'm sure if you're following lithium trades, you're going to see what they're suggesting. And if everybody, if every government meets their goals of getting rid of internal combustion engines and switching over the transportation network to, to um, electric metals, then, uh, then there's going to be a lot of lithium needed. It's dominated by China. That's the opportunity for us being domiciled in, in the U.S. And, and, and the Americas. And uh, I'll just summarize the company, some world-class assets, two lithiums, one uranium. We're in tier one mining jurisdictions. We've got strong community support. We've got a proven management team that's had five projects taken out for the benefit of all shareholders over our history so far. The lithium outlook remains strong. And there's a lot of near-term value drivers in this company. And again, we're going to spin the uranium out to the benefit of the shareholders. So look forward to seeing that coming in 2024. There's your team. That's when we rang the bell at the NASDAQ. And uh, that's it. I'm happy to take some questions. Great job. OK, Andy, we do have some questions for you. Uh, let's start off with Alexis. Alexis asks, asks for you to break down the percentage of your resources, exploration, development, and production. Well, we don't have any production yet. We are only in exploration and development. And as you can see, TLC has already been explored. It's got a 9 million ton measured and indicated resource there of lithium carbonate equivalent, one of the largest resources in the domestic US. Same with Falchani, again, one of the largest hard rock deposits in, in South America. And uh, and uh, both are now in PFS. Makusani has had a PEA done years ago. We are currently doing a new PEA, and then it will head through PFS. But, but none of these projects are in production yet. The earliest that they could get into production would be four years. Uh, Michael Glorioso asks if you could discuss the value and expiration of the warrants acquired from PLUUF shareholders. Can you repeat that again? The uh, can you discuss the value and expiration of the warrants acquired from PLUUF shareholders? I, I don't remember when they expire. I want to say it's, it's, I think it's sometime this year. It might be July, but but those warrants are exercisable at $3 a share. Uh, if the lithium trade consolidates and stays along this bottom, then you know, whether the company trades above $3 again, I don't know um, in the near term. Whether we extend the warrants out past their expiry later this year, I can't really answer that yet. Uh, we've done that as a management team in the past, so it's possible. Those warrants were issued when we bought Plateau. Initially, when we bought Plateau, uh, um, uh, we bought it at about a $110 million valuation and shareholders were issued shares in American Lithium. 
and then as a bonus, they got a warrant. And so uh, that's why the warrants still exist. If they if they uh, are, <laughs> I'm speaking as a chairman and one member of the board only. But I'm, we are going to look at whether we're going to extend those warrants or not if the markets don't improve. But at this Perfect. point, it's difficult to say. Great. Uh, Dietmar Schur asks, did you spin out the uranium? Not yet. We're going to. Uh, so the company tried to spin out the uranium last year, and it was just a bad market. I, I was actually the only director that voted against spinning it out at the time. Uh, we're going to spin it out now, so it will get listed on its own in 2024 for the benefit of American Lithium and its shareholders. So that's coming. Uh, Freda asks the TLC Nevada, what is the significance of it sitting above the water table? Is that a cost saver or a resource you can utilize? It completely changes the permitting process. If it sits below the water table, then, then the Federal Waters Act gets involved and, and your permitting process goes from two years to four or five years anyway. It's one of the one of the major requirements for for expediting a a um, a plan of operation to build a mine is that the deposit sits above the water table, and and if you and if people go back and look at Lithium Americas, their plan is to mine the deposit above the water table first. They've made the point of saying because their deposit does go below the water table, they won't mine that. And uh, Frank M says, when you have the deposits and the projects, how are they structured? If you can break it down, are they leased? Do you have rights? How does that work? We own them 100%. We own them uh, and we pay annual claim fees or licensing fees to the government, uh, to the BLM in the United States. And there's, and there's some county fees and state fees. Uh, and then in Peru, we pay to the to the um, federal government of Peru and annual costs of holding the properties. But we hold them 100 percent. So we have no royalties that any other um, individuals or companies own on our projects. So they're ours. They're to the benefit of our shareholders. And Tom Fletcher asks, what's your most recent number on the measured and indicated resources? Uh, so right there, TLC, 8.83 million tons measured and indicated lithium carbonate equivalent at TLC. Uh, Falchani, 5.53 million tons measured and indicated of lithium carbonate equivalent. And then 6 million tons combined of inferred lithium carbonate equivalent. So, I, I mean... 43101 does not allow you to combine those. Analysts will do it, but I can't. Uh, and then uh, and then the uranium, Makusani's uh, 52 million pounds uh, indicated and another 72 million pounds inferred. And a little bit more of a deep dive into these. Michael John asks, are there also byproducts like re in the uranium ore in Makusani? No. No, it's a it's a really clean. It's it's there's it's not metallurgically complex or anything. It gets just it's an amazing it's an amazing deposit. It's it's straight up. It's clean. Is it an underground mine? Uh, no, it'll be open pit. And in Falcani, the lye ore is spodumene or peta petalite. It is not. A pegmatite. It is a volcanic tooth. A volcanic tooth is like glass. It's like a glass. It's it's volcanic ash that's been um, uh, solidified. I guess it's a tooth. A tooth is not is not a um, a granitic rock. So it's completely different. But it makes for, it's absolutely, it's unconventional, 
but it's absolutely easier to, to produce an end product out of it. You do not have to calcine it like you would have to do if it was a spodumene. And uh, Victor Wozniak asks, um, for you to comment on the stock price, is there any dilutive financing in it? And talk about how you feel about the, the market cap. I think the market cap's really cheap. It's $340 million and uh, it was a billion dollars a year, a year and a bit ago. Uh, I, I think it's crazy cheap right now, uh, but I get it. There, you know, there, there was a whole pile of lithium explorers and lifestyle companies and pump and dumps and all kinds of things out there. Uh, like just all kinds of, you'd go to a, 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 one of these commercial events and you'd see a, 50 lithium companies there and like they're just there's there's not that there's a handful of really good ones and but 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 everybody throws the baby out with the bathwater. i think that we're cheap right now but i remember this company trading at nine cents a share uh after the first lithium bubble burst in in i think it was february 2018 and things got really, really dire for a year and a half. So I think we're cheap. It's unfortunate the stock price is a buck sixty a share, but but uh, you know because we've got some money in the treasury, we're okay. But let's face it, when you're when you're developing three projects, you're going to need money, and so we're working on that. We won't take a public financing. We're working with several strategics to talk about uh, a strategic investment, and we'll have more to report on that to the to the market in, in the future. Well, thank you so much, Andy. We look forward to you coming back on the conference and giving us these updates. We appreciate you. Super. Thanks, Anna. Thanks. Pleasure. Thank you. Have a great rest of your day and stay with us, everyone. We'll be right back.